Hey guys, how's it going? So let me just make it just me for a second here. So it has been a while since I did one of these Alex the Analytics ride along videos. And a lot of things have happened. I did the entire basic series, fully intended to continue on to the intermediate series. This was back in February, March, I believe. And I got crazy busy at work. A lot of things happened. My workload increased and I just felt like I didn't have time for areas of study that weren't necessarily part of my main job. I have since circled back to that. I'm getting back into daily study of these ancillary uh, data skills. Obviously, most people are going to flinch when I call SQL an ancillary data skill. It's quite a cornerstone data skill. It's not something that I use routinely, but very similar things within the Alteryx ecosystem. And so I started wondering, well, do I want to get back to doing these videos? Do Is there really a need for them? Is there, you know, do, do people want this kind of content? I decided I didn't really care. Um, I hope that you enjoy the content. And I know that kind of my hardcore fans will tend to watch things where I'm on camera regardless. Hey, what's up, Abe? But I like these videos because number one, they force me to practice skills that I might not use. They force me to practice teaching, which is my main job. So I really feel like I always need to get better at that. They make me produce content and video content, which is something I'm not normally inclined to do. And also they do make me better at teaching and instructing and being on camera and all of these things, like you know how I'm nervous with my hands. And so, uh, and also it's going to give me ideas for my own original content. Once we graduate to that, I have ideas for a past. I have, uh, ideas for a series that I want to do. And so I really feel like this is kind of a good soft start for me. So if you like it, great. If not plenty of other YouTube channels for you to watch, including Alex's own channel, which I will link. So without further ado, I figured out how to add some music to this. So that's super cool. Let's go ahead and fade that in there. So the video we're going to watch today is the first of Alex's intermediate sequel series. And he's going to go over all different kinds of joins. He doesn't get super complex with it. He won't get into aliases or anything like that. The thing you need to know right off the bat is he's added some data to this office personnel database that he was using in the beginner series. He didn't put it on his GitHub, or at least I couldn't find it. It is in the comments of the video. So let's go ahead and pull up the video. I will warn you that I let my YouTube premium subscription lapse. So there are some commercials. I will skip through them as, as quickly as I can. But let me cut my own music and let's go over to Alex the Analyst from three years ago. Hold on. I don't think I added the audio. One second. Entire screen, screen two, share system audio. There we go. I always forget that. All right, let's try that again, Alex. What's going on, everybody? My name is Alex Freeberg, and today we're going to be starting our Intermediate SQL series. If you joined us for our last series, we walked through the basics of SQL, which is everything you needed just to get started. And in this series, we're going to be walking through some intermediate concepts to really take your skills up to the next level. Now, today we're going to be walking through joins, but let me show you what you can expect from the entire series of this Intermediate course. So we're going to be walking through joins today, and then in future videos, we're going to be walking through unit primary characters, foreign key. And then we're going to have an advanced course. And this is not set in stone yet, but these are some of the things that I think I will be going to feel like we can go ahead and skip through this. You're going to see all these videos. String functions, regular expression, store procedures, and then importing and exporting data. So with all oh, there's the commercials. Okay. So one thing I did forget, this is a 50 push-up challenge for every video that Alex puts out in this boot camp. We're going to do 50 push-ups. So come on now. All right, 
Let's go ahead and pause it there. I'm gonna do 25 push-ups. Let's cue some music. Feeding the ducks. Let's do it. <laughs> myself when I do that. Let's All that being said, let's get into it. All right, now let's get rid of me because we do not need to be seeing me for the rest of the series. At the very top, here are some of the things that we're going to be going through today, which are inner joins and then outer joins. And in the outer joins, we have a few different styles or a few different types of outer joins. Now, a join is a way to combine multiple tables into a single output. For now, we're going to be using the employee demographics and the employee salary table. So let's get a look at both of these tables and see what's in them. In our employee demographics table, we have employee ID, first name, last name, age, and gender. And then down here in our employee salary table, we have employee ID, job title, and salary. If you notice, they have a similar column, and that's going to be the employee ID. Now, when you're doing a join, you have to do this based off a similar column, and typically you want it to be a unique field. So we're going to be using the employee ID from both tables to join these tables together to create one output. So let's get rid of this real quick, and let's start building our query to join these two tables together. So the first thing we're going to do is an inner join. So let's do select everything. Just go ahead and pause Alex for one second. So, like I said, he uh, he brought some new data in here that he didn't introduce. And I went on his GitHub, couldn't find it on there. So let's just go ahead and unmaximize the screen here. You can find, if you go to his video here in this first comment with 620, let's give him one more like. So Christian Burrich, hooray for Christian, two years ago, uh, put in the script here. You can actually just go ahead and cut and paste this script and drop it right into SQL Server. But let's go ahead and see where we did that. I will cut and paste that and put it in the comments of my own video as well if you want to follow along. Okay. So here you see the query. It's not really a query but where you insert into the demographics, these three new entries, Ryan Howard, Holly Flax, and Daryl Philbin. I'm not sure why Daryl wasn't in there to begin with, but hey, why not? Um, and then into the salary values, we have this unmatched 1010 value, and then this salesman with no idea. Okay, so let's see how that affects our tables. So here we've got the demographics table with the new added entries. So we've got Ryan Howard. That's a complete entry right there. Holly Flex is missing an ID and her age. And then Daryl Philbin also uh, has no age entered. So a little weird, but he does have an ID. So then we've entered also some kind of incomplete data into the salary table. So we've got 1010, which is a has a null title but it has a salary. And then we've got this last entry with no ID. It is a salesman with a salary. So maybe that's uh, Danny Corbury, if you're a fan of the show. I like to imagine that's his base salary and then he makes the rest on commissions. He was a late addition. So, and then Ryan Howard, it makes sense. You know, he's not backed up in the salary table because he's a temp, so he probably gets paid through the temp agency. Alrighty. So now we're caught up. You're ready to go when Alex launches into joins. And let's go ahead and Rejoin him. Scroll back up, cut my music, cut my. And let's do it from SQL tutorial .dbo employee demographics. And let's do join. We can also say inner join, but join by default is going to say inner. And we're going to do SQL tutorial .dbo employee salary. Now we have to join them together, which is what we talked about earlier. And we're going to be doing that based off the employee ID. So for that, we have to say on, and then we're going to say employee demographics dot employee ID is equal to employee salary dot employee ID. So let's run this real quick and take a look at the output. And let me pull this up real quick. So what we're looking at is actually both tables combined 
we have the employee ID, first name, last name, age, gender, and then here's the salary, employee ID, job title, salary. Now an inner join is really only gonna show everything that is the same. So in both tables, there are employee IDs of 1001 all the way down to 1009. But if you notice, there is data that is missing. Real quick, let's go down to this graphic and let's look at this inner join. An inner join is gonna show everything that is common or overlapping between table A and table B. So what we're looking at here is exactly that. We're only looking at the things that are similar based off this employee ID in both tables. Now let's change this join to a full outer join. And let's run this and see what we get. Now, if you notice, the output is very different. So let's take a look at it and see why it's so different. If you notice, everything down to here is the exact same. So employees 1001 down to 1009 are exactly the same. But once we get down to row 10, it starts to get very different. Now we are joining these tables based off the employee ID. So for example, right here, Ryan Howard has an employee ID of 1011. But as you can see in this table for salaries, there's no 1011 employee ID. So it has nothing to link it to. So because of that, it fills in everything as null because it has nothing to match on this table. And vice versa, in the employee salary table, there's a person in here that's a salesman and there's no employee ID at all, which means all this information is gonna be null. And we can see that in this diagram right here. So this is the full outer join right here. And what it is saying is we are gonna show everything from table A and table B, regardless of if it has a match based on what we were joining them on. So even if table A has an employee ID, but there's no employee ID in table B, we're still gonna show it and vice versa. So now let's Okay, so I gotta say some stuff here about this Venn diagram, and then we'll go ahead and copy what he did with those joins. Where's my mood music? Here we go. So, soapbox moment. I despise Venn diagrams when it comes to explaining SQL joins. And there's a reason why when I first started learning SQL that I found it very difficult to understand joins and to visualize and conceptualize them because Venn diagrams are woefully inadequate to the task. Let me show you what I mean. So A union B, an inner join is supposed to be this stuff right here, right? Well, no, that's woefully inadequate because here's the thing. There are things in table A that don't exist in table B. The only thing that overlaps is that key column. So to use a Venn diagram and say that the things that overlap between the two are identical to what a Venn diagram says is inadequate. What, you're, what you know is that when you join the overlap of table A and table B and you get that inner join, everything is different once you go forward because you have joined all of those commons, columns together. Same thing with a full outer join. You're not just taking all of the things in A and B and making them one big happy family. You are merging them, you are joining them together. When you take a left join, you are taking things from table A and you are changing them. If they don't overlap, if they don't have a key column entry in common with table B, now you have the stuff from table A with null entries. So a Venn diagram tricks you into thinking that everything is the same going forward. You've got the set of all red fruits, you've got the set of all apples, and in between is the set of all red apples. That's not the case with SQL joins. You are changing everything going forward. So to me, Venn diagrams were hopelessly confusing, and I prefer, much preferred to see examples of a handful of different rows. Now, that's why it's good that we're going through these examples. Let's do that now. So what did Alex start out doing? So here we have select all from the SQL tutorial database employee demographics. That is our left table. We are going to interjoin that with what is now our right table, which is employee salary. So left and right. Easy enough, right? So let's go ahead and do that inner join. And we're going to notice exactly what Alex said. It looks exactly like the database that we had in the beginner portion before we added these new incomplete rows. It's nine rows. It's all of kind of the core cast and everything is nice and complete. There's nothing different. Now, the different thing that we've noticed is we have the demographic table here, employee ID, first name, last name, age, and gender joined with the salary table, which is employee ID, job title, and salary. Now the key column shows up twice. We'll figure out how to get that to stop happening here uh, in a little bit, but you've selected every column from both tables. They all join together and go forward. Now, the next thing that Alex showed us was the full outer join, and here's where it gets kind of messy. 
So we've got the exact same thing. The only thing we've changed is instead of inner join, we now have full outer join. So let's execute this one. And now we see all of the nulls pop up. And this is where the Venn diagram becomes inadequate and you have to actually see an example. So we've added, the first thing we've added is Ryan Howard. So Ryan Howard exists in the demographics table. All five of these columns are populated. Ryan Howard is not in the salary table. He's a temp, he gets paid elsewhere. So he has a null for employee ID, job title, and salary from the salary table. Obviously he has an employee ID. Then you have Holly Flax, who has some incomplete entries, kind of ironic that she was the HR person, probably responsible for these things. But she also does not exist in the salary table. I think she was employed by another branch. So that makes sense that Scranton wouldn't track her. Daryl Philbin is the third one that exists in demographics, does not exist in the salary table. She got nulls here. Then you've got the right side. So entries that are in the salary table, like employee number 1010 and this no ID salesman with their salaries are joined with nulls because they don't exist in the employee demographics table. So full outer join takes all of the nice neat things that join together well, all of the things that don't join nicely from the left and all of the things that don't join nicely from the right and puts them all together. You see everything there and everywhere that the table can't fill in becomes a null. With that, well, let's go back to Alex. We were joining them on. So even if table A, now let's look at a left outer join. A left outer join is going to take the left table and say we want everything from the left table and everything that's overlapping. But if it's only in the right table, we do not want it. Now, what is the left and the right table? The left table is going to be our first table that we use. Our right table is going to be the second table that we use. So we're going to look at everything in the employee demographics table, regardless of whether or not it has a match on the employee ID in the employee salary table. So this is what that looks like. So as you can see, this is our entire table for employee demographics. And down here, we have three that have information in the employee demographics table, but have absolutely no information in any of the employee salary table because there's nothing to match it on. So this 1011 is not in this table. This 1013 is not in this table. And this one does not even have an employee ID. So we're not gonna have a match at all. And if we change that to the right, you'll see the exact opposite. It's gonna show us everything in the employee salary table. So now we have all of our information right here from the employee salary table. And if it doesn't match in this table, it's just gonna have nulls. So down here we have 1010, and obviously there's not gonna be anything associated with that because there's no 1010 in the employee demographics table. And for this one, we have a salesman with no employee ID. And since there's no employee ID to tie it to this demographics table, we're gonna have nothing. And we can see that in the diagram right here. So for the left outer join, we're looking at everything in table A, which is our demographics table. And in our right outer, pull this down a little bit. So, so far we've only been using the select star. So we've been selecting everything and I only did that just for demonstration purposes, but you most likely would not be doing this when you actually use these joins. What you're probably gonna wanna do is select exactly what columns you want in your output. So for example, let's do employee ID. Let's do first name, last name, and let's do job title and let's do salary. And let's try to run that really quick. And as you can see, it is not gonna work. Now, why is that not working? It's not working because we have two fields, one in each of these tables, and we have to specify what employee ID we want because that is gonna drastically change what our output is. So we have an employee ID in this table and in this table, which one do we want to use? So for this demonstration, let's use employee demographics dot employee ID. And let's actually just do an inner join because it's easier for the output. Now let's run this and see what we get. So as you can see, we now have the employee ID, first name, last name, job title, and salary. Now we're doing this with an inner join based off the employee ID from the employee demographics table. But if we use the employee salary table, it should give us the exact same output. And that's because we're using an inner join. And an inner join is only going to show us everything that overlaps between both tables. But now let's try a right outer join. And let's run this. Now we're using this employee ID from our employee salary table. And since we're doing a right outer join, we're going to get all the information from our employee salary table. And it does not have to be in our left table, which is our employee demographics table. So if you look at the information down here, this 110 is in the employee salary table but it's in this position because that's what we're looking at in our select statement. And then over here, we have our salary. And since we have information right here, which is in our employee salary table, but there's no employee ID, our employee ID is null. Now let's change this to look at the employee demographics employee ID and execute it. As you can see that 110 is gone. Now we just have this information right down here and we didn't have the employee ID for either of these. So it's gonna show it regardless. And that's again, because we have a right outer join and that's why we have no employee ID down here. If work ever feels like This?
You need Smartsheet. The enterprise. Now let's do. Okay. That's what happens when you let your YouTube premium lapse. Let's go over and do these ourselves. Okay, so we'll start with the outer joints. And again, I, you see me shaking my head. I hate Venn diagrams, but what you need to understand is, like Alex said, the first one you lift list is gonna be your left table. We read from left to right. The left table shows up first. That's the first one you list. So a left outer join is going to show every entry from the first table that you list and only the matching entries from the second table based on that key column which is employee ID. So let's go ahead and execute this left outer join. And so we can see every entry, we've got Ryan, Holly, and Daryl added to the employee column from the, from the demographics table, but we don't have those two, Danny Corbray and, and his friend, that those two added from the salary table that are not in the HR table. So left outer join, now let's kick it over to the right and try that one. And then you can see 10, 10, and then salesman, Danny Corbray, uh, these ones in, that are in the salary table, and they're matched up with nulls for the demographics table. All good. Now he goes in and let's go ahead and replicate this. So I've got the fixed version, but let's go ahead and, and just blank this out here. I'll control X that so I can grab it later. So we're doing a full outer join with these one, two, three, four, five. And you can see the squiggly red line is already telling us it's an ambiguous column. Let's bash our heads against a brick wall and just try it. Doesn't work. Ambiguous column name. So you have to name which table you're pulling from because employee ID exists in both. So we paste that back in employee salary dot employee ID. Little squiggly red line goes away and presumably our query is now going to work. So we execute that. Sure enough, we get a full outer join with only the columns that we asked for. The employee ID column is pulled from um, is pulled from the employee salary table. It doesn't really matter because it's a full outer join. So you see that you get the nulls, those four nulls that exist in the employee salary table for employee ID. So the three rows that we added, Ryan, Holly, and Daryl, and then that other null for the salesman. So we get all of our rows. Now, what did they do next? Nope, that's the join on. Okay. So he did a left and right outer join. So let's just type that in. Left outer join on that same query. So now we're down to 12 rows. So we did a left outer join. There are only 12 rows in our left table, which is the demographics table. So you can see we get all of the entries from the demographics table and those columns that came from the salary table will null out. So we go right outer join, F5 to execute if you don't feel like going up for that click button. And so here we have the salary table. We only have 11 entries because we added two more and we're missing those three, uh, Ryan, Holly, and Daryl. And so we've got all of the nulls. We've got the employee IDs, including that 1010 that comes from the salary table, salesman, which I'm calling Danny Corbray, no ID. And so we've got all of the nulls for the names that would come from the demographics column, but these are the two uh, shoddy entries from the salary column. Okay. Now I think we're caught up. Let's cut back over to them. I forgot to start my music. Dang it all. A left outer join. And it's basically going to do the opposite of what we just looked at. Now we're looking at everything from our left table, regardless of if it's an employee demographics ID. So with the employee demographics ID, it's going to show us the first name and the last name, which is everything in our left table for these IDs. I change it right up here. Execute it. Because we're showing everything from our left table, which is our employee demographics table, we are still going to see our names. But since we're using the employee ID from our right table, now we're just going to have blanks in this information and this information. Now let's look at a use case for these joins. Let's say Robert California is pressuring Michael Scott to meet his quarterly quota. And Michael Scott is almost there. He needs like a thousand more dollars. And he comes up with the genius idea to deduct pay from the highest paid employee at his branch besides himself. So how does he go about doing this and identifying the person that makes the most money? Well, of course, he's going to come to SQL first. So we actually want to look at a full outer join real quick. And let's just look at everything. So here's what we have. 
we have the employee ID, first name, last name, age, gender, employee ID, job, title, and salary. Now, what information do we need to know to get the information that Michael Scott needs? Well, we need the employee ID. We want the first name and last name. So let's write all that real quick. So employee ID, we need first name, we need last name, and then we're also gonna need the salary because we need to know who's the highest paid employee. So now let's do an inner join because we really only want to look at the employee IDs where we know what their name is and their salary is. And let's do this based off the employee demographics table. Really doesn't matter from inner join, but let's do that real quick. So let's look at this. So we have our employee ID, we have our first name, our last name, and our salary. And we want to do it where it's not Michael Scott. And that's because Michael doesn't want to take away his own money, he wants to take away his employee's money. So let's do where first name does not equal Michael. And he knows that he's the only one that is not named Michael. So now we have our list. And let's do order by, and let's do salary. And let's execute this. And let's do the sending so that we can get at the very top. And this is tough, tough news for Dwight Schrute because it looks like he is the highest paid employee besides Michael. And so it looks like he is gonna get a cut in his pay this quarter so that Michael can meet his quota. So that's just one use case. Let's look at one more. Okay, let's see if we can replicate what Alex just did. So like he said, you've got to nug down on the table for employee ID. We're just going to go name and salary, full outer join, and then we're joining on employee ID equals employee ID. <laughs> Pretty soon, Alex will get into aliases and we'll make this a lot cleaner. But for right now, it's just going to look kind of big and clunky. But now you're going to put in your where clause. And I think he covered where clauses in the beginning, but where clause just modifies your query at the end so we're doing query 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 give me all of these columns but then give me only the rows where the first name does not equal michael so does not equal is that little uh greater than less than or less than greater than i suppose and then the string is set off in single quotation so you can see it lights up real nice sql server management system is is cool that way when your when your uh, syntax is good you're going to get it lighting up in nice colors so Michael lights up, you don't get a little red squiggly line, you've done your syntax correctly. And then we're gonna order by, so that's just gonna be your sort function. So we're gonna order by salary, descending, to get the highest paid non-Michael employee up top. Other ways that you could sort and get Michael out of there, you could exclude anyone that is uh, that has manager in their title. Uh, so you could say where, where t job title does not contain manager. Um, lots of different things you could do there. But let's go ahead and execute that. And like he found, Dwight Schrute is the highest paid, well, really paid a lot more than Jim Halpert. That's surprising. But anyway, uh, yeah, Dwight Schrute, the second in command in his own mind, is paid 63,000, only slightly less than Michael. So. And obviously, yeah, if you were finding yourself a right target for a uh, culling salary, that would be the one right there. Okay, we've only got one more to go. I'm just going to go ahead and leave the music on. I'll watch this video later and just see if that's annoying or not. But let's go back to Alex for the home stretch. Let's start out by getting rid of this and looking at everything again. So for our next use case, Kevin Malone, who is an accountant, thinks that he may have made a mistake when looking at the average salary for our salesman. Now, Angela Martin is very good at SQL, and so what she is going to do is she wants to go in and calculate the average salary for our salesman. So let's try to get that information. So all we're going to need is the job title and the salary. So let's come up here, and let's get job title, and let's get salary, and let's look at this. And now we only want to look at where the job title is equal to salesman. Now, the very last thing we want to do is we want to say we want the average of salary. Now, since we're going to need to do a group by, we're going to have to get rid of this salary and just take job title right down here and do group by job title. So we're going to have job title and then the average salary. And there you go. We have the salesman and the average salary is 52000 So Angela now knows to go back and fix what Kevin made a mistake on. So that's how you use joins. I will include this image in the description so you can go and look it up yourself if you are curious and want to look at that. That really helped me out when I was first getting started to kind of conceptualize and understand what kind of data I was pulling based on what join I was using. So I hope that was useful to you as well. In the very next video, we're going to be looking at the union. So if that is posted, be sure to check that out next. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I Obviously, it was posted. This was all three years ago. 
So just to re-explain, I think we went over this in the beginning set, but if you have an average, you have to also group by something. You have to take it granularly down. Let's see what happens if we leave that off. So I've copied the entire query here. So we've got job title and average salary. We don't need the table name there, obviously, because these only exist in, uh, in the salary table. But let's go ahead and try and execute that and see what the error message that comes up. So job title is invalid in the select list because not containing either an aggregate function or the group by clause. So what you're saying is I want the average salary, but you haven't done anything with the rows. So you still for this uh, inner join, you still would have nine rows coming up, but many of them would be for, uh, for the salesman. So let's go ahead and take the average off. And now we're just going to get that data for salesmen. So you've got three entries for the salesman. So in order to average them, you can't be still getting single row data. So when you put this average function in, now suddenly you're going to need to add something because you can't just average one. The average one row is its own number. So if you if you're trying to do some sort of aggregation function, average, sum, count, anything like that, you have to group by something. So we're going to group by. Sorry if you're a stickler for capitalization, and we're going to group by job type. Now let's execute that one and happy day. So we've got the average salesman salary, 52,000, all good. So now we're caught up to where Alex is or was three years ago. So in this one, we followed along with Alex and we did uh, all of our joins. So we did not, not the most complex ones, but these are the common joins in SQL. So inner, outer, left and right joins. And then we saw how to apply that with some of the skills that we already learned in the beginner set. So uh, aggregation functions, grouping, ordering or sorting, all those good things. Soon we're going to be able to simplify this by learning aliases. And so we'll get rid of some of this sort of clunky, complex language. We can nickname our tables as something real simple and, and use that. I don't know if eventually he'll get into cross joins or kind of uh, or self joins or some more complex functions. Maybe I shouldn't have skipped through the uh, what, when he was briefing what he was going to go through in, in the future. But uh, as my uncle used to say, we'll burn that bridge as we cross it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have suggestions or other things that you'd like to see, go ahead and drop me a comment and like and subscribe and all of that sort of good stuff. And I'll continue with more of these videos. Talk to you later.